we played with this in a number of ways, for example, to try the, the theory that cities are the engines of growth in a region. Um, so we included other uh, parts here. And this also allowed for, sorry, let me say, this Gathen, the region of Gothenburg here, where my colleague Kirsten would have come from, together with these four other um, um, sorry, um, regional local associations, together form the county level, the, the big regional level. And they have different opinions on whether it's a good idea or not to cooperate. And we could simply, by, by displaying it here, we could get, feed a lot of info into that discussion, which was very helpful for our politicians to argue for the case of closer cooperation. Um, it's just really interesting that when you split these regional associations into the municipalities, so in, in blue and big here you have the city of Gothenburg, the other blue ones are also members of this regional, region of Gothenburg, right? So we can do the same thing again, we can play the development from 91 up until 2008, you can see that the, for the ones that perform really well, the ones that have both high income and high education, they are either blue, which means that they are closely related to the city of Gothenburg geographically, or that they are slightly bigger than the rest. So these are big enough in themselves to sustain a certain amount of growth compared to these four ones here that are neither close nor big. So size matters and closeness matters if you want to have a sustainable growth in, in this regard at least. This is very helpful when you want to discuss on a municipality level, should we cooperate or not? And if you see up here, that these are the neighboring municipalities that cooperate with Gothenburg in the regional, regional level. If you saw how they have different, differentiated <coughs> themselves from Gothenburg from 1991 income-wise, you can see that they have really benefited from being so close to the city of Gothenburg. Anyway, we also split it into the wards of the city of Gothenburg. So now we are down on a ward level, we see the same time period, the same indicators, education and income, and we can choose to highlight two of them, <coughs> just to make the point very clear. Let me show you here. So, oh, I don't know how to swear appropriately in English. <laughs> <laughs> James will teach me, thank you James. Um, this is something that made a big impression uh, on the politicians when we showed it first time to them. We showed two different wards here at the same time period. You have one deprived neighborhood down here. Um, actually, this is not showing it correctly. Um, that's it. You can see how different, you remember in 1991 and onwards we had a serious recession, right? You can see how different the different wards were affected by the recession. Actually, the income level fell quite considerably in the deprived neighborhood. And when the income, when, sorry, when the economy turned around, they made very modest improvements from one year to another. Compare that to one of the most well-off wards in the city of Gothenburg, who hardly were, you know, they were hardly, hardly nudged from the recession, and they make an improvement every year, equal to buying a moped or a scooter. Here, you earn a pizza moped here. So, of course, over time, the differences grow, right? So, that was an excellent tool, very helpful for strategic decision, decision making, but it was limited. We were developing this ourselves by the help of a programmer. It is li it's limited to showing these two variables. Uh, it needs a lot of programming to, to change it. But what we have moved into now then is a more flexible tool. Uh, it, it, in the center part here, you recognize the same, it's exactly the same story I'm showing you right now. Um, you have these two wards here, the, the deprived one and the well-off one. But you also have a map showing you where are they located in the city. Um, but you can play it just the way I did before, but you can also see the development being shown on a map. <clears throat> this is really helpful for local civil servants who usually don't work with GIS programs. They think they are a bit too difficult. They can easily save the image or the diagram as a picture whenever they want. Um, I can also choose what to show on what um, axis here. I guess can, I can change um, what I want to show. I've chosen to load into a lot of different indicators here. This is a database in itself. I can just read you the headlines here. We have labor market information, population growth and size, uh, housing, crime and safety, 
um, equality and participation, um, spare time and culture. You have all sorts of indicators in there, and you can load them in and get them displayed very easily over time to see the trends. Um, if you want, you also have stories here that I've prepared ahead of, of, uh, of you, so you don't need to do anything else other than just clicking on this story you want to read more on. In the text, I'm telling a story. Something has happened here in 1998. When I click on the link, everything is, is uh, prepared for you. So I'm guiding you through this story. I'm telling you to focus on one specific area, and you just click it, and that one is highlighted. So this is a very efficient tool to share knowledge. To, you remember that we've spoken a lot about that we have fragmented knowledge in our organization. This is one way to get around that, to create common knowledge. I mentioned that we load all sorts of indicators here. They, of course, I acquire them from different departments in the city. So they, for once, they display their own data in relation in the context of all the other departments' data, which is a bit new. So actually, you have people from the environmental department saying, oh, it's really interesting. I've never seen my set of data in relation to, to yours for someone coming from the physical um, side, for example. So this is one tool, there are others, but this is one that facilitates a common holistic understanding of the challenges that the city as a whole faces when it comes to creating an urban sustainable development. Okay, thank you.